Hello and welcome to this episode of Speak PR. This is the podcast for business owners who know they've got something great to unlock in their businesses if they can just find the right ways to communicate that. And today we're going to talk about video. And I'm joined by Alex Redman, who is the founder of Clipshare. Alex, welcome. Thank you, Jim. How are you doing? Great, thanks. I trust you're doing well too. Now tell us, Clipshare, I've been watching you on, on LinkedIn. What problem are you trying to solve for business owners? Yeah, firstly, thanks very much for having me uh, on the show. It's really great to speak to your uh, yourself and your wider audience, have a bit of a catch up. So Clipshare um, is designed to t- tackle a fundamental problem, which is if you're uh, generating long form video content, so maybe that's a vlog or a you know, blog or blog just like this or podcast, or maybe it's a longer sort of sales and marketing piece, how do you drive traffic and ultimately eyeballs to that content um, so uh, you can actually you know, generate revenue off the back of it, however you're doing that, whether it's ads or whether it's by monetizing through actual services or products. So one of the ways you can do that is by chopping up into a little bit of clips. Um, that's the kind of pertinent point, the real takeaway. You might put a call to action on that and then distribute it far and wide across social media. Um, the challenge with doing that is it's quite labor intensive, um, quite repetitive, um, and it's got to be a little bit nuanced between each of the platforms. So what we do is take the pain out of that process and try and essentially automate as much of it as possible. Um, so you can sort of have, you know, let's say one or two hours a week where you set up all of your content scheduled um, for the week and it's all based uh, off content you've already produced and you're simply repurposing it to get more bang for your buck out of it. How is it working? Is it uh, choosing certain sections of my video or am I needing to decide I want a certain section of the video and it's auto editing? Um, You've actually touched on some of the longer term roadmap which is if you think of the problem statements I've um, mentioned there and uh, the solutions you know you, you want to get um, as much computer programming in finding those clips as possible and that's certainly something that we're we're thinking about but in the shorter term so where we are right now generally the content creator um, knows the piece that they've lovingly uh, edited uh, no doubt for hours and hours and days and they will pretty much have a handle on where the good bits are where the, you know that's going to be a good bit for linkedin actually i know when i linked in the audience that's probably going to be quite good for twitter so at the moment they uh, go in and, and select essentially those timestamps in that video um manually but we say manually it's really not that hard at all um if uh, a lowly um non-techie person like myself can do it i'm pretty sure um your esteemed audience can do it as well and so with this um, content, if we've got it on our desktop, then do we need to load that to the cloud or is it something that you have residing as an app on people's computers? Yeah, so at the moment it's um, uh, it's uh, completely in the cloud, so cloud-based, um, and that's so we can have uh, the scalable architecture that we need to give uh, users the performance they need because obviously video rendering is quite... Um, uh, you know, a computing power intensive. Um, so it's all hosted in the cloud. Uh, at the moment, in terms of, because um, we're quite early in our business life cycle, aimed at early adopters and innovators, um, we're pitching it at, um, let's say, YouTubers um, or, or uh, podcasters, videographers, maybe the smaller social media managers, where they have the problem statements I've articulated at a higher volume, where a lot of their content's already hosted on YouTube. So the first off um, uh, way that we grab content is by directly linking to your YouTube account. So it's super seamless. Um, it literally it literally looks exactly as your um, your sort of uh, channel tiles on your own YouTube page. There is also um, a URL essentially fetcher we call it, where you can copy paste a URL in to access that video. Uh, and one of our next steps is to have um, an actual uploader from your your uh, desktop because we've had a few user requests for that uh, recently. So we kind of jig around our product innovation roadmap depending on the user feedback. So um, we're trying to make it as accessible as possible for uh, what the user base are asking for. If you're taking these clips and you're putting them across to, uh, for example, YouTube, are these becoming in effect trailers then for the long form content? At the moment, the call to action is um, essentially written in your description box. 
So if, as an example, if you look at how people might be posting on LinkedIn, they'll typically upload a video, have a, a small description, and then they'll say something like linking comments, you know, click the links. And then that link um, would then uh, drive uh, those, let's say, LinkedIn views to whatever pillar or, or um, uh, clip content is that you want. Um, so at, at, the, at the moment, um, uh, you can pretty much put whichever link you want in that description box and drive the traffic how you see fit. Um, uh, in uh, future iterations, we'll have, you know, there'll be some like drop down boxes or whatever to make that super seamless because ge generally um, people are driving traffic to only a few only a few let's say repositories you know the youtube channel or to their website or whatever so you know, we are envisaging and certainly our users are telling us that um uh, uh you know it's 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 only you know, one two or three uh, destinations that they want to drive the traffic so we're trying to we're trying to channel it in those directions why would this be different to someone just taking from for example their iMovie um or their adobe just taking those clips themselves You've essentially got these two, um, let's call it almost monolithic industries out there. You've got uh, video editors, so your iMovie, uh, to use your example, but you've also got a lot of the social media management tools and scheduling tools, uh, later.com, um, Buffer, Hootsuite, all of the big names. When you get into, let's say, the pro packages on either of those that really have the functionality that you want, those are becoming quite large unwieldy products that generally need quite a bit of skill set and investment in personal learning to actually get up to speed uh, with some of them. Our premise is there's a, there's a huge underserved part of the market where people just don't have time to do that. And they actually just need to get from, let's say zero to one in terms of getting some video out there. They don't need to be an absolute expert um, on the video out there, they can get 80 or 90% of the value by just nailing the basics. And that's what our product does. So we bring um, the best bits in terms of zero to one from a video editor, and we bring the best bits from a social media management tool in terms of scheduling, and we bring those together in a really neat package that tackles that underserved part of the market. Is this also helping people to do some of the branding and the subtitling that other packages are are offering at the moment uh, our current software release we've got the branding uploader on that which is really cool so um, and I'm bound to say that I'm biased so uh, I'm not sure which side of the screen it is but basically your logo pops up here um, it can be whatever you want um, uh, we've got a little clip share watermark and obviously that that you know in one fell swoop makes it look really professional and slick just just by uploading that one little thing um, and then uh, one of the next releases we'll be doing is to get subtitles in there. Um, so subtitles can be a little bit of a challenge from a technical point of view, not to dive into too much detail, because in this kind of natural flowing conversation, you get a lot of ums, a lot of ers, and the subtitles can sometimes be nonsensical. So you need to you need to make sure when you're from our side, when we release that product into the market, you've got a way of maybe editing out some of that more natural language to make it much more readable. And that's what we're working on at the moment. And who are the customers in the target audience? You mentioned sort of more high volume users of video. Uh, we're getting really good response from uh, YouTubers. So YouTube content creators who there may be pro amateur content creators. So they might be still doing this as a side hustle to their day job, or they have just jacked in the day job. And now they've really got to invest in getting content out. And it's almost a full-time job in the week. Uh, Twitch streamers, um, other, uh, you know, obviously streaming has gone through the roof in the last uh, couple of months for all the obvious reasons. Um, so we're getting a, some good response and traction um, on that side. Uh, and also, um, I'd say smaller social media managers that are looking to find an edge um, so what we found is some of the biggest social media managers, because they're being, you know, bombarded by people wanting to sell them products every day, they want case studies. We're still a little bit younger, whereas the smaller social media managers are much more open to um, uh, tools that can really give them that edge. So I, I had a discussion with a social media management firm uh, up in Manchester recently, and their feedback to our product was, um, 
there was a quote i'm better you know it's nice of me to say this but they said um you know this is the tool we've been waiting for um but the really thing the really interesting thing they said that opened my eyes was this will allow us to bring um social media management back in-house because it will essentially allow them to restore their margins on that piece of work because it takes the um so much of the labor element out of it from their side so that's really really compelling you know if they can add you know another you know, line item to what they're offering from their existing resource, that's really, really powerful. What sort of skill sets would an individual need to use Clipshare? Uh, if you can use LinkedIn, you can lo- use Clipshare. If you can use YouTube, you can use Clipshare. If you can use Twitter, you can use Clipshare. If you use Instagram or Facebook, you can use Twitter. Uh, you can use Clipshare. It is pitched at the same level of intuitiveness as those platforms, if not easier so a key premise of our tool is people just do not have time to learn these products and they have to just work um so uh part of our um uh, offering is to just stay as simple as we can in terms of that user interface um so um i think that there's there's always when you touch a new product or service or whatever where you're, you're intimidated by the newness that's very very natural um but we, you know, we've already got some uh, onboarding videos on the website. Uh, we've got shorter ones and longer ones to run you through almost from start to finish what the process looks like. Um, we we think it's um, de-risked as much as possible. Um, but you know, please do your audience have a have a try, have a play about. If there's any builds, please let us know. But it's 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 super easy. Even if even I can use it, um, uh, then uh, I promise you can as well. What are we looking at in terms of fees for using Clipshare? So we're currently running our early adopter program, uh, which has a 50% discount across the board for every plan. So you've got a a free plan in perpetuity um, to uh, uh, that has uh, basically a Clipshare watermark. That's how we monetize it from our side and give you value uh, for free. We then also have um, the monthly paid plan, which is on the early doctor program, seven pounds, um, uh, sorry, nine pounds uh, per month. And then on the annual plan uh, is simply the exact same thing, but paid up front with a 20% discount. So I think at the moment on the early adopter program, what's that 80, 84 pounds, I think for the year, which is the way I look at these things is that's a, that's a tank of petrol in the UK. That's really nothing. That's what we like to say anyway. But uh, going going forward, we'll obviously um, you know collaborate with our, our users to find out what um, uh, the right price point is. Because obviously, um, you know, the sooner we can um, uh, you know build up our revenues from the business side, the more value we can create in terms of launching uh, earlier software iterations. So, and you mentioned um, uh, currencies in pounds, and language is English. Could this work for people in? Uh, in Asia, for example, or with French or German, uh, are there limitations at all? At the moment, the user interface is English only. Um, but in terms of the output and what you, uh, what, you know, uh, files in terms of being inputted, linking up to your YouTube channel, that can be any language you want. And in terms of what files you can then create and then post and schedule um, to your various platforms, Twitter, wherever, that's in whatever language you choose to post it. Um, you know, there's a description box um, as per platform that you type in your message. You can type in whatever language you want. In future, we will be doing a more, um, let's say, uh, slick language rollout. But like all these things, um, when do you do it? When's the right time? Uh, which market do you go after first? And we will we will get there. But certainly, you know, if you're in China right now or Japan or Russia, uh, so long as you can speak English, you can use the product. No problem. And Alex, you mentioned YouTube, but what about for companies that are using platforms like um, Vimeo, for example, for live streaming or Dassault? Yeah, yeah great question. Um, uh, long story short, not yet. Uh, we um, have got a, a lot of things in our um, basket that we want to do. Um, we haven't uh, done Vimeo yet. It's going to be there soon. Um, we're, we're, we're trying to be quite considered in terms of how we do the various platform API integrations. The reason being is over the last few months, there's been a lot of moves in the social media market. Um, Look at the big announcement for Joe Rogan's podcast moving over to Spotify. Uh, Look at what's going on with TikTok in the US. 
it's, it, as, a, as a third party provider in this space, we've got to be very, very targeted for which platforms we invest in hooking up to. Um, because from our side, you know, if we put a significant investment in terms of um, software dev, and then we're not allowed to access the market because Donald Trump has done something, that's a key risk. So at the moment, it's um, YouTube only or a URL uh, link in the coming days. Um, and then the desktop file uploader. So we think that allow that package quite early on allows us to access pretty much most users. Um, and then for areas where we're getting more requests, we'll look to prioritize those accounts. So if enough, if, an, if enough people shout about Vimeo, we'll bump it up the product innovation roadmap and we'll get that linked up as soon as we can. Alex, that's great. So you also mentioned there's a share it function. So what's the share part of Clipshare? Yeah, exactly. So, um, so you've uh, you've got your long form content and you've cut up all these little clips um, that you want to to distribute. So the sharing function is how we do that distribution. So um, once you've selected those clips, you want to then share. You you click um, schedule it, essentially on the on the button, and then you've got a, a scheduling dashboard essentially that sort of tees up those those clips. You write your descriptions, you select the platforms uh, to distribute to, you select the time and the date, because obviously you might want to be targeting an audience in Japan with that one specific clip, or you might want to be targeting an audience in South Africa. So clearly those audiences are gonna come online at different times. Uh, and then you literally just say, uh, post it, schedule it. Alex, that sounds great. And if people do want to send off an email to you, how do they get hold of you? Any method whatsoever. Uh, so uh, you can hit me up on LinkedIn. It's uh, Alexander Redman. Uh, my email address uh, is alex at clipshare.it. Um, you can go to our website. My contact details are all over the website. Alex, thank you so much for joining our Speak PR podcast today. Fantastic. Thank you very much for having me. And um, obviously wish your audience uh, some success in what's a very tricky year uh, for all of us trying to uh, build businesses and generate revenue for our clients and also our families. That was Alex Redman of Clipshare.it, which is a way that you can start to make fragments and little trailers from your long form video and upload them, but then also distribute them. And so this is part of our five-stage methodology, the Speak PR, which is Storify, Personalize, Engage, Amplify, and Know. And Clip.it obviously is under the amplification module. So thank you so much for listening to this episode of Speak PR. If you like it, please do rate it, subscribe. Come to our website at eastwestpr.com to subscribe to our weekly newsletter or get in touch with me, jim at eastwestpr.com. And in the meantime, until we meet again, I wish you the best of health, a profitable business, and that you keep on communicating and sharing it.